Marty's Lavorg is black, and so is the all new Black Edition Mighty Car Mods merch, including my black chopped hat. You can check that out on the Mighty Car Mod shop. In fact, I'm just gonna say it, Martin. This episode of Mighty Car Mods is proudly brought to you by my chopped hat. By his hat. On this episode, we're gonna finish off this Laborg and make it a sweet, tidy, last 10% done streetcar. Bellissimo. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Welcome! The Lavorg has come a long way, people, in just a few short episodes that have been extremely dense. Like those sandwiches when they've got so much stuff on them. Sometimes too much ham. It's folded Sometimes. over and over and over and no. over and over and over again. None of that. You want a good lettuce to ham ratio. You know, absolutely, We're Martin. talking complete rubbish. What is happening today? So last episode, we're, like, we're going to do a bunch of stuff, including the interior. We just didn't get to it, dudes, because there was way there was too, too much, much stuff. Happen. We did suspension, we did intakes, yep. we did intercooler, yep. there was fueling yep. stuff. Yep. Um, but Martin, before we do anything, yep. do we need, need to, to go and see our friends in the government. <laughs> yes, we do. Goes nothing. We spend a lot of time in these seats, don't we, Martin? We do, lady. It's going to be good. I have a good feeling about today. It's going to be a good thing. To the credit of Service New South Wales, when we were here a little while ago and we had our troubles with our 180SX saying they needed, um, that we needed paperwork we didn't get, um, someone from like quite like high yeah. up in the organisation emailed us and said sorry. Yeah, said sorry and let us know if anything we did to help. And luckily by then it was all sorted. But yeah, good on Is you. that you? Thank you. Luckily for us this time it was smooth sailing and with some skilled keyboard cat the details were updated and I was issued some sweet new registration papers. That smiles all round. Ten out of ten. So this here is the new rego form which now on the bottom of it basically says modified as per Engineers compliance report. and engineering whatever. So. It's legal, Martin. 100%. It's pop up, legal, Good to go. and done. Good to go. Engine That's awesome. Number, bin, all that stuff's recorded. Thanks, service on their systems. Very and happy with that. A little head gasket. <laughs> Got the big one, a little one. Martin, let's celebrate with some noodles. Oh, let's get some. And then let's get back to the shed. Let's do it. And actually kick off the uh, kick off today's mods. Festivities. I have never had. A like pickled cucumber with mad little Japanese spice. So good, before. wasn't it? That was delicious. So good. Everyone, it's been an excellent morning. For starters, we've got mini head gasket plates. So this <laughs> here is a requirement here when you're putting your bikes on the back of your car. You gotta then attach this so your number plate is not obscured. But more exciting than that is what's in Martin's hand right now. Right here. So I went in there with a big ream of paperwork and I've come out with just one sheet. Why that's awesome is this is our actual registration document, modified as per compliance certificate, October 2020. So that is awesome. So that now stays with the car. That's our certificate of registration. And the thing is completely good to drive on the road wherever, whenever. That is amazing. Now there is lots of stuff to do today, but before we jump into that, it's time for a very exciting bit. And that is to hit up the dyno to kind of run some tune, uh, heading down to Ichiban, which is a place we've um, been to uh, before and done uh, a bunch of different builds and stuff over there. We also heard from Subaru. It turns out they've been watching this build and they're like, is there anything we can help you with? And we're like, yes, actually we need to find a couple of little skirt options, SDI stuff, and Lavorg rear apron, skirt, side skirt, whatever that is. Um, so they found them for us. We're gonna pay for them, but I gotta go pick them up. And while I'm doing that, Marty's dino. hitting the dyno, we're going to meet back here and then we've got to pull Fish. the interior apart Fish and um, inside. there's lots of things to do Martin. Good. But Fish let's get things. to it. So you drop me at Subi, you go do the dyno and we'll see you back here shortly. I've come down to Ingleburn to see Scott at Ichiban. He works on these cars day in day out building and tuning all kinds of flat engine Subarus. From 40 year old Brumbies to the latest generation VBWXs, there's a little bit of everything here. He's worked with my combination of mods many times, so there shouldn't be any surprises on the dyno because we're aiming for a solid and safe power figure and good drivability. Scotty, so good to see you, man. Likewise, mate. Thanks for having us. No worries. Now, you are no stranger to STIs, particularly VAs. Yep. Have you seen these sort of explode lately? Yes, they've become a, a good choice. You know, they're a great platform. They drive like a new car, yeah. but they've still got the Subaru heart in them. Yep, because so. they're still EJ, right? Still EJ. What's your sort of process with doing something like this? What are you looking for when it's reasonably mild mods? Um, basically, we just all the mods are on, so we're going to just set the AFR 
um, get all our fueling dialed in with uh, you know, the closed loop, yep. and then we'll start to give it some timing and boost. It'll tell me where it wants to be. Yeah, you know, cool. Some cars want more, some cars want less. Yep. That's why we do it on the dyno. We customise it to each car. Yeah. So. And so the map you sent me, I was really impressed. Like, it's it's driving great. Yep. I was keeping an eye on the FU ratios. It looks really good. It looks kind of where you'd expect it to be. I mean, it's awesome in this day and age you can email someone a thing and they go, you yep. drive your car. Yep, that's the... So, obviously, you don't drive it like crazy. But um, what changes sort of happened from that stage where you're roughing it out to yep. now? What are you refining? Um, basically, it's fueling, as I said. So, we will trim that up so at the moment it's probably you know, 85 percent there yeah. so we'll, we'll do the fueling and then we start to put the timing and boost into it so we're looking for detonation you know that's the biggest yeah. killer of them so it's a fine line we want it to be able to survive on the track but we want to get the most out of it yeah. so yeah then we'll start to play with throttle tables and stuff like that as well yeah so, make it nice to drive yeah. Awesome. Yep. And um, in terms of next steps from here, so obviously you must, you've got quite a few customers that have a car at this stage. Yep. What's sort of the next thing that they're kicking up to after this? So after this, you'll have to go bigger turbo. Yep. By the end of it, we'll probably see you know, 18, 19 PSI around 4,000, and then it'll taper down to 15, 16, because yep. it's just out of efficiency. Right. So we go and put something that's like a you know, GTP SO 3.5, Dom 1.5, something along those lines. Yeah, which is stock location. Stock isn't location, it? they bolt on, off you go. Yep. You know, we'll, on this dyno, we'll see sort of 230, we cap them on 98. Yep. 270 on E85. Yep. 270 in one of these, it'll do an 11 8 quarter mile. Wow. So, you're in the 11s. Yep. And you're, you're at the limits of a stock motor then, with yep. being sensible. Exactly right. You know, you can push them harder, but the brighter the candle, the quicker it burns. True. <laughs> so you'd expect to see this over 200 today? Uh, or usually, close to? Yeah, usually we see about 185 to 195, yep. but every car's different. The car is strapped on and now it's time for our first run of the freshly modified Lavorg. So it ramped up here, it hit 17, almost 18. Yep. But we would be targeting, you know, usually 16 in the, uh, sure, that map. So you pulled out of the run a little bit early. What did you see in the run where you're like, I don't need to see any more? Um, well, I heard the little bit of knock. Oh, right, in your knock ears. In my knock ears. Oh, cool. And then you can actually see. And once you hear that, there's no point to continue because. No, that's right. So, trouble. so it was at four grand. Yeah. See that dip? All oh, right. So because the ignition timing's gone, nah, pulled out, and then gone, no, I'm, I'm good now, and kept going. Sure. So, and then our AFRs are nice and flat there, 10.4, so probably a touch rich. Because the car still thinks we're trying to accelerate up the highway away from a bandit. It doesn't know we're on a dyno. No, that's exactly right. That's why it's right. like, yeah, I'm going to give you your power if you yep. ask for it. So, and yeah, we can see our boost is there 17, 16, 8, so. Right. We're in the ballpark. Yeah, we're just, cool. We'll trim it a little bit. Very good. And I mean, yeah, I saw it hit up near 190 at the top. Yep. It's... And we haven't got to the, the we haven't got to the plateau yet. So usually sure. you go to the point where it starts to roll over. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's solid. Good place to start. Cool. Let's take a touch out of there where that knock event was. And yep. All right, we'll go round two and cool, see. Man. Solid. It's about 195. You see where I said before we hadn't gone until it rolls over? Yeah. And now it's starting to roll yep. over. And that's just the sheer boost. So you can see there it tapers down. It's just the turbo can't make anymore. Right. But which will bring, yeah, that means that turbo will come on nice and quickly. Yep. But can't keep up long term. That's right. So usually these things about the, the six gram mark, yep. they're, they're done and dusted. Right, because so. it's flowing a lot of air at that point, isn't it? Yep, and you know, the VF Turbo was originally designed for a two litre. 
So you got 25% uh, right. more capacity, yeah. but they didn't change the turbo, it's yeah. still a VF. And small turbo means when they sell the car, people aren't going, where's my power? Because it right. does come on. Yeah, it gives you a nice punch, nice ramp. With a, an EJ with stock pistons, Yeah. because their car's detonation will kill them. Sure. So this is what we look for. And yeah, we're doing a 10 second pull. You're not in fourth gear for 10 seconds. No anywhere but we want to make sure that's where it's going to unless you're on a very long straight yep <laughs> manifold pressure here so peak boost is there which equates to 3000 rpm comes on pretty that's pretty yeah. early isn't it yep which means it's not restricted if that's right it's spinning breathing, up that quickly yep. it's breathing generally you'll make five to seven kilowatts per pound of boost yep so you know four fives is 20 so it just yep. rolls over right so, do people get when people get greedy in EJs? Is it because they they run out of boost and go, well, I'm going to find power somewhere else and start creeping the timing up? Yes. So cylinder pressure is the biggest thing with um, EJs. Yep. Yeah, you know, holding their heads down. Yes, right. They'll make really good power with lots of timing. Yep. Just because you can doesn't yep. mean you should. Okay. And so this is maybe where people start thinking about ethanol, which you could. I've chosen not to do it because stock turbo. It's yep. like well, use ethanol. We find ethanol will make a 15% gain. So sure. if you go same boost, yep. but with ethanol we can put more timing in it because it's got higher octane, yep. burns colder. Yep. We'll just pick up 15%. It will be in the low 200s at that point. Yep. On so a yeah, stock car. yeah, 190. Yeah. So round numbers 200 kilowatt. Yep. You usually pick up 10, 15. So you'll be 220, 230. Okay, cool. But then you'll use more air because yeah. it comes on earlier. So it's a, a give and take. Yeah, sure. So you see we're even ramping up the duty mm. cycle to try and make the turbo hang on, but it just yeah, doesn't. Do it. Yep. And yeah, we're targeting 11.0 down here, so yeah. we'll give it a touch of timing and see how it responds. Nice. Crack 200. Crack 200. That's solid. Yeah. It's looking pretty healthy. Yeah, and all I want to work on now is that little dip there. Yes. So around the four grand mark. So yep. it could be in the cam timing, but we'll have a look at it. Just to sort of smooth it out. Smooth it out. Yeah, you know, if we can sort of go from you know from that point to that point in a more of a straight line instead of it having like that. Yeah that'll be better. It'll feel good on the road. Yep. Um, AFRs, and so we'll go just to that last run. AFRs nice and flat, 10.7, 10.8. Two hundred, we're you know, on and boogieing. Yep. Peak power's there at fifty-four hundred. Yep. And then we're sort of revving it to about sixty-six hundred, but it's still making one hundred and eighty-five up there. <laughs> it's not nothing. Nah, so I don't think we're going to. Uh, I think that looks great, man. Get much more out of it. Good job. Thank you very much. That's pretty much it. I'll Fantastic. check the cruises and, and yeah. stuff like that, but let's take it for a little putt around. This is yeah. the, this is the relaxing bit. Yep. Just drives like a normal car. That's it. Cool, eh? This doesn't seem to be much compromise. There's less compromise these days. Like, you don't have to have a complete undrivable nugget on the street to have something that's got a bit of power. Like, exactly you can kind right. of have a bit more of both. Yep. And we take it for granted because, like, oh, yeah, it's a newer car, but, like, it's so usable. It's, yeah. Throw five people in it, fill yep. the boot full. Yep, go, full the, the, go the snow in it. Yeah. And we'll give the old uh, flat foot a bit of a check, make sure it works. Flat foot shift, you say? Yeah. I've never seen this before. Oh, so you're on the throttle the whole time? Yep, you don't come off it. Wow, that's cool. And as long as you're on the clutch, it holds at whatever RPM you set it at. But then when you come back out of it, it just... Right, so cool. You can go more aggressive to five and a half. Five is just that nice, it lets the synchros catch up. Yeah, it's, yeah. It doesn't yeah. murder your box over it. No, and we will usually see... 0.2 faster at the drags right. and one to two mile per hour just from that function. That's significant, isn't it? Yeah. When you're splitting hairs. That's right. You know, it's, it can be the difference between a 13 and a 12 or yeah. a 12 and 11. So I like a characteristic that still drives like a factory car. 
but makes more grunt. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk dyno figures. Now, it's worth remembering that this Laborg, when it was completely bog stock with a 1.6 litre CVT, made just under 100 kilowatts at all four wheels. Stock, an STI, like the one that we pulled all the drive line from, will make roughly 200 horsepower or 150 kilowatts at the wheels. Doesn't sound like much, but it's reliable and it's got good torque and blah, blah, blah. So this thing has made another 50 kilowatts above that and double what the car made originally, which is a really good figure considering all we've done is a couple of basic bolt-ons and it's still running on petrol. Now, some of the massive figures that you do see out there sometimes, even when it's a stock block, is often with a really, really big turbo and also it's the torque that breaks engines and it's when you bring in that torque that's usually what snaps stuff. So if something's making 500 horsepower on a stock block, chances are the power figure's right up the top. I will say from driving this back from the dyno, the power feels really good, really yeah. widespread and it's kind of what you want from a street car. Now long term, do I want to turn it up? Absolutely. Big turbo, not a question. It's going to happen. E85, going to happen, especially now it's set up for the fuel system for that. But in terms of like sort of a stage one and a half, stage two setup, I'm very, very happy with how this drives. Now your goal for this is to be making power that is far superior to what Supergram's ever made, right? Like long that's term. where it's going eventually. Yeah, long term. But for now I want to finish off the rest of the car, including the inside. What I will say while we're here at this juncture is if you are modifying your car and you've done a bunch of stuff like this that has potentially added value to your car, uh, ring your insurer. Certainly like with Shannon's, particularly because cars over the last couple of years have been going absolutely crazy. All of our cars are insured with Shannon's and they are a sponsor of the show. This is something where we've been able to ring them now and kind of go, everything's engineered, everything's done, this is the format that it's in. Yep. It's clearly worth way more than the grovel that it used to be. Exactly. So actually make sure you know what your car is worth and make sure your insurance is adjusted. And if your insurer can't do that, Get a new one, just saying, over part of, here. Part of the reason for that as well, I will say, is that it's not just about value thing, it's also what if you want to do it again? So if you have a total loss, something happens to it, it gets stolen, you might want your car back and to get that back you need to make sure it's all covered, which is the reason you list all the mods, because you can go back and, and start again, is the idea. How'd you go? We've got little STI oh, bits yes. here. So these are the Lavorg bits for the back. And so they're the grovel bits and these are um, STI skirts. So let's get onto these after though, now yeah. they're here. I reckon the job now, rip the interior apart yep. and just oh. run the churns, people. Let's go. Run the bangers keen. and let's keen, get into keen. it. head unit is out and ready to go in the bin and uh, Marty wants to run CarPlay so we are putting in this complete system which is meant to fit right in the factory space. This is an I doing, I doing, I don't know, it's, it's off the internet, uh, six, seven, eight hundred dollars approximately and this here is designed to fit in exactly the space where this one was and what it does provide is obviously you get your GPS and stuff like that but it also has Apple CarPlay, your Android stuff. So that there replaces this whole section. So like that. So I'll obviously pull these out and the vents go in there. But let's just have a quick look real time. Let's see if it's actually going to fit. How's the tension? How's the excitement, people, to see if this actually fits? But if it does, uh, and it actually works, then it's a great uh, all-in-one solution. Uh, Marty is going to be upgrading um, speakers and putting an amp in and stuff. So this here, is all going well, going to fit in. It's going to fit. That's unreal, look at that. Get all your mad touchy screen stuff there. That is excellent. Eye doing.
So sedan receipts and wagon receipts are ever so slightly different. Um, again, like the rest of the car, they've used bits and pieces uh, and sort of interchange them just to make it do what they want to do. But the main difference here is the restraints on the back here. So that's for your child seats or whatever it is you want to anchor in the back. It's in the back of the seat on the sedan. It's in the actual car. So we have to retain, in order to stay legal, we have to retain this. The good thing is there's no laws about what material you can have on the seat. <gasps> Sorry. So we can put <laughs> different uh, material on the seats and it will be completely fine. So I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm just going with it and seeing what happens. I just stabbed myself with a screwdriver. <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah, I know. What do you mean you broke my thing? I didn't break it. Did it's you in break there. it? No. Look at that. Is it working? Yep. Looks good. Looks great. And none of it's broken either. It's not. Fully works. Lucky for you, we have a you spare one. You don't need that bit anyway, do Lucky you? Lucky for you, we've got a spare Lavorg one, which is the same. Yeah, but you don't need that, do you? I guess not. Yeah, you don't need that, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the STI, the Lavorg rear seats actually have a recline feature and have a locking mechanism in the top corner of each seat which is activated by a cable. I'll need to mix and match the backing, the foam and the covers, but they are all similar enough that I think it might just work. So with a bit of mixing and matching, this is where I've ended up. STI seat, which fits really nicely in there. It's all um, fastened down. The only thing is at the top, there's a slight different spacing. So if you're getting really precious about details, that's different. Otherwise, it fits really nicely in there. It's got all the original stuff. And importantly, it's got the anchor point, which all I have to do is cut a hole for in the original fabric. And then the actual plastic clip will go over it. So you won't, it doesn't really matter how rough I cut that. The cool thing is the Lavorg actually has the attachment points, further proving that these are the same car. Um, these attachments points are just for the STI or the sedan. Uh, so that's how you know that this part is actually the same except for the inclusion of anchor points. They would have made that, cut it out, and then welded that into the factory, put these in the Lavorg and the other ones in the sedan. There it is, hybrid STI seat. So that's actually the Lavorg seat still, just with the STI foam and cover on it, which is pretty cool. It has the anchor point in the back, importantly, and uh, that is ready to slap back into the car. Next, I'm gonna do the other side, which is basically the same process all over again, and then I'm gonna put them both in. The middle and driver's rear side seat, I have to do a little differently. The STI and the Lavorg have a different armrest configuration, so the STI cover won't fit the sheet metal backing from the Lavorg. Luckily, they are identical except for the anchor point, which I'll simply transfer across from one to the other. Then the foam and cover will fit with only a small amount of trimming and the entire rear of the car will match perfectly. seats are in and I think they look excellent wrapped in their STI goodness. All the factory adjustability from the Lavorg still works which is mad so all the functionality from the original car with the mad looks from the STI. Now we can start working on some interior entertainment with the eye doing 
head unit and associated bits. Now, as any audiophile worth their weight in RCA cables will tell you, um, quite often the quality of your musical and audio experience is not just about the speaker, it's not about the cone and the magnets and things, it's actually about the structure that those speakers are in. So a really quick and fairly efficient thing that you can do to make the structure of your mobile speaker machine better uh, is some sound deadening. So this is something that has been particularly beneficial when we've been working on really crappy cars, pretty much all of Marty's. Um, but today, um, we're going to do a little bit in the back because it's all pulled apart anyway and it will make it sound mad. And as a demonstration, here's a solid bit of sheet metal and here's the bit next to it. So that just acts like a giant oh, drum no, skin no. And, uh, and resonates. So we, the idea is to sort of add weight and bulk and mass to it so that it can't as easily vibrate around and cause problems. There's already such a big difference. Listen to my side that's not done yet. And mine is done. Just doesn't have the ring, does it? Yeah, so much better. This is the factory front speaker. It's got the plastic mounting housing that sits on there to get it pointed in the right direction. Uh, the factory speaker's got a tiny magnet. I mean, it's modern tech, so it's probably okay. It says max 35 watts. It's gonna be perfect for most use, mm. but being that we're gonna get in there and we have to upgrade stuff anyway, we might as well go a bit harder. So I bought these speakers quite a while ago, actually. They're Alpine something. I don't know what they are. Anyway, they'll work fine. They've also got crossovers, so we can run the tweeters in the front, which we will. We'll use the factory wiring to go to this speaker, and then we'll plug into this, and then send one of these up to the tweeter, and then plug the iDoing into this as well. Or yeah, an sorry. amp, we haven't worked that out yet. Uh, rear speaker, basically exactly the same, except it's just got a little bit of a deeper um, little kind of thing around here that's meant to kind of blast the sound out. Now we just got to work out whether we try and use like a multi-fit thing or this, but Marty's all for just getting a blade and just cutting it out and cutting the factory speaker out of that housing and then trying to mount this one into there. So that's what we're going to try and do now. some gasket goop uh, around my speaker because I had to cut it down. I may not have had to, but I was just worried that the cone would actually be hitting against the, uh, the door trim, which would make it sound like ass. So just decided to chop it down. So that will easily fit in. I've also soldered in the factory plug onto the speaker. Everything else now happens on the end of the eye doing or the amp. So now the door can go back together and this is done. Meanwhile on the back, it's the same kind of thing but a slightly different configuration. So mine I don't think needs to be cut down. I've done a test fit to just to make sure that that actually goes into the cavity uh, with the um, door cards over the top of it and it appears to actually have maybe 5 to 10 mil uh, of space in between it. Um, same thing, uh, I've cut off the factory plug and just soldered it on here. We don't know exactly what the wiring diagram is for the speakers but we know there's green going to each side and green going to the front, so we assume that that is the ground, so we've wired this up as such. And with speakers, um, if you get it backwards, the worst is they're out of phase, and it just means it sounds like crap, so you can fix it later. Yeah, yeah, and flip it at the front, basically. Another mad upgrade, thanks to our crashed STI sedan, is this is the Lavorg door trim, this is the STI door trim. Kind of same, but not exactly the same. We get rid of that sort of piano chromey crap and we go to the black and red stitching, which will match our front and rear seats. I think the rear door trims might be different, but we'll get to them when it's time. For the moment, I'm gonna throw on this passenger one now that the speaker's in, which looks pretty cool, and throw that in the bin. This here is a Lavorg rear door trim. This here is an STI rear door trim. We reckon they're the same. So I'm gonna put that one in the bin. We'll put this one in. Yeah. All right, 
Right, so interior mods, very exciting. I have this awesome little gauge cup holder called uh, by Andro Motorsports, and it actually replaces the factory vent hole and sits in there and just tucks the gauge really neatly in and then you run the wiring out through here. I've already run the vacuum hose to it just to test that it works. And now I've got to actually plug it in because it's one of those stealthy ones. The actual gauge is by GFB and it's one of those stealthy ones where it only lights up when you have power and then you can also dim it. So I've got power here, ground, and then the orange one is illumination. So I'm gonna wire that in and run it probably over to the stereo. There might be somewhere down here I can plug it in, but stereo I know will work. I'm gonna run those wires just to extend them across and then get stuck into the stereo itself. We are going to be running a five channel amplifier. Why? Because the iDoing um, is not compatible with a Laborg that's been STI swapped. I got this Alpine one because it's really small but still um, puts out plenty of power. It also gives me the option to run a sub, which is cool. And I might actually do it in this car because it's got a boot big enough. It's a cute little amplifier. Importantly, five channels. So you can do front, rear, and a sub. You need a bunch of RCAs to run that to the back from the iDoing. The iDoing comes with the breakout cables to do it. And then between all this stuff, we sort of balance it up to make it work. Now, the reason it's not plug and play is because we put an STI dash into a Lavorg. The Lavorg harness is different to the STI harness. If you ran the STI harness the full way through the doors as well and the full way to the back of the car and extended it, you could do that. But just to get your audio system working is probably not worth it when you can just go a bit more old school but do, do it this way with some RCAs. But the benefit is it's also gonna have heaps of power. So this will put out way more power than anything else would anyway. seat of the grovel here because it's the only seat <laughs> that it currently has that's right um the uh wiring and stuff has been completed martin it was like he was harking back to his young days before oh, mighty Commods. he actually worked at like an auto shop installing this kind of stuff didn't Doing you and heaps selling of it. stereos yeah heaps of stereos i mean that's pretty good that's only a couple of hours from scratch and having to tap into random looms that weren't there but i've got a song loaded up on the phone we should be able to because this has carplay just be able to plug in and turn it on and it should just come to life. Yeah. The stereo won't be tuned, but we should hear noise. Let's go, I dong. Verification. Verification. Oh, yeah, dude. Here we go. Yeah, dude. We got subs too. Oh yeah, we are subbing. We got sub? Yeah. Awesome, dude. That's great. Find the volume for the sub and turn it up, mate. <laughs> I've got to work out how to do that. A to B, the Civic and a level when it's just a tease. The eye doing fits pretty well and the inside is now done. So we can put the cherry on the Subaru cake and install the STI lip kit, which is a hybrid of both the STI sedan and Lavorg versions that you can get from the factory. The neatest way we've found to install these is to remove the skirts from the car, which snap off with a few plastic plugs, and then we can drill and bolt the lips on. Being a factory part, the fitment is perfection. The last thing we're going to do under the bonnet is install a white line strut brace for extra rigidity and mad looks. In the well, that was another massive session on the SDI Lavorg, and look at it. Looks freaking awesome. Looks great. And sometimes jobs turn into a slightly bigger beast than you originally thought. What I thought would just be a head unit install ended up being an entire audio system, but I'm so happy with it. I haven't had a car with a mad audio system for a while, so I'm pretty stoked. Now, next episode, we got something mad, something special for you. It's going to be very, very exciting, which is going to bring us to a close of this particular chapter of 
the Lavorgi grovelly conversion. Yeah, it's time to just sort of enjoy it. It's all set up now. It's exactly how I want it. It's tuned. It's got the cool kit on it. Um, we're going to clean it up a bit, make it look nice, and then just sort of enjoy driving. On some of the roads that this car was intended to be driven on, well, maybe not a stock level. Actually, a stock level could do it too, but this will do it better. So next episode, we're giving it a proper, well, the proper first drive, which is going to be awesome, uh, plus a little something special for you guys. So make sure you uh, make sure you check out the next episode because there's something cool going down in that one. Other than that, if you want to support the show, of course, mightycarmoz.com. we got lots of merch, like the shirt, the shirt, the hat. We ship them anywhere in the world. And Martin... That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have an awesome time. And I'm going to go eat a bulgogi bowl. Bah. Is that what you call them? Bulgogis. A bulls burger bowl. Yeah, yeah, that sounds a good. A bulls bowls burger. Oh, wow.